I was supposed to pledge a lifetime of love and become his wife, but my marital life with David quickly turned into a nightmare. My in-laws doted on their son, and he prioritized them over me, treating me as an afterthought and imposing unreasonable demands. I wouldn't let such people ruin my life, so I devised a surprise to punish everyone involved. My name is Alyssa, and I'm 29 years old. I've been married to David for a year now. We work in the same company and often collaborate on projects. Although I don't have a college degree, I have more experience at the company, having been there longer than David. Despite being a high school graduate, my strong sales performance earned me a decent salary. The company values ability over academic background. David, who is capable and highly trusted by his colleagues, was a boyfriend I could be proud of. I fell for him and gladly accepted his proposal, and we happily became a married couple. However, my in-laws began to interfere in our relationship. One day, when we visited their house, my mother-in-law suddenly said to David, Hey David, are you really okay with marrying Alyssa? You've always excelled in both studying and sports, yet you chose someone as mediocre as Alyssa. My father-in-law nodded in agreement. Yeah, at first glance, she seems like an average young woman with nothing special about her. David responded, Ah, that's what you're talking about. It's fine. I love Alyssa. Despite his reassurance, my mother-in-law gave me a sidelong glance that cut deep. I felt worthless, but I had worked hard to take on adult responsibilities. I cursed them in my mind, but held my tongue to maintain a peaceful marital life, avoiding conflict with my in-laws as much as possible. On another occasion, my in-laws started complaining in front of me. Hey, David, are you really okay with your current workplace? My mother-in-law asked, isn't it a place where even high school graduates like Alyssa can work? David replied, the pay is good and I have good colleagues. My father-in-law added, you're too smart to stay in a place with high school graduates. There must be many other good jobs out there. They tried to persuade David while glancing at me, believing that responding would mean losing. I didn't react, but I'm a seething inside. What's with that tone? I do my job right, and there's no difference in work whether you're a high school graduate or not. In fact, sometimes I earn more than David does. It's safe to say that I don't have a good impression of my in-laws who judge based on academic background or appearance. However, they don't physically bully me and I don't suffer much direct harm. I told David upfront that I was a high school graduate and knowing that, he said, I love everything about Alyssa. I take pride in my achievements at a company that values ability over academic background. Despite my in-laws' disparaging remarks, I always believed David was on my side. However, an incident shattered that belief. One day, out of nowhere, David said something unbelievable. Hey, I've been thinking. I've decided to switch to a different job. What? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Well, I was talking to my parents and I realized our company even hires high school grads like you, Alyssa. I mean, I have a college degree, so there must be a better job out there for me. Are you serious? You're making fun of both me and the company, aren't you? But it's true, isn't it? There's no need for me to work at a job that even a high school graduate can do. Plus, my mom said she could introduce me to a job through someone she knows. Stop it. We are blessed with a good work environment. And now you say something like this. You're nagging. I finally realized I'm not someone who should be stuck in a place like this. It became clear that his parents had influenced him and he convinced himself he deserved better. The very next day, without discussing it with me, he submitted his resignation and casually left the company only a year into our marriage. David switched to a factory job introduced by his mother, where his salary dropped to about half of what it was. The only advantage was that it was close to home, making commuting easier. About a week after starting the new job, 
he began to complain about the factory. That guy, even though he never went past middle school, has the nerve to tell me what to do, he shouted, scattering his clothes around. I stepped in to stop him. Why are you so angry? If you make such a loud noise, it's going to bother the neighbors. Shut up. Why does a university graduate like me have to be bossed around by a low-level middle school graduate? Well, you just started there. It can't be helped. He's your boss, right? I don't care. He can't even study. But he has the nerve to boss me around. Damn it. Who's the real problem here? What can a newcomer do without instructions from the boss? You chose to switch jobs, so bear with it a little. I know that already. Will he be able to continue at his current workplace? How long can he endure the situation? Nevertheless, my admonitions only worsened his mood. Every day became a struggle to soothe him enough to get him to work. My doubts turned out to be right when one day he caused a major issue at the workplace. You broke the factory equipment. I asked in shock. In response, David slammed his hand on the table. It's not my fault. It's that damn boss who pissed me off. But that doesn't mean you should break the factory equipment. That's absolutely unacceptable. What were you thinking? Had no choice. That guy was bossing me around, even though I'm a university graduate. The trigger was when his boss, who only graduated from middle school, criticized David for not working seriously. In response, David insulted his boss's academic qualifications. It was clear to everyone present that the fault was entirely with David, so they sided with his boss. In rage, David went into a violent rage and damaged part of the conveyor belt, stopping the production line. He was fired and faced a large claim for damages. Since it was a factory his parents introduced, the damages had to be paid entirely by David and his parents. As a result, David lost all his savings, but even his parents' retirement fund seemed to have vanished in an instant. My parents are struggling right now, but they're moving into this apartment next week. David said, leaving me gasping in surprise. Living together. I never heard about this. You're my wife, right? Just listen and keep quiet. This is a done deal. Got it? With these words, he left the room with a bang. A few days later, my in-laws actually moved into our home. Adam was a joke. Living together was absolutely impossible, so I confronted my in-laws directly. Father-in-law, mother-in-law, living together is a problem. Shut up. It's your fault our son couldn't make it at the factory. My father-in-law snapped. That's right. It's because you neglected David's mental care, isn't it? My mother-in-law chimed in. Wait a minute. How is this my fault? Can't you shut up? Our life is a mess because of you. My father-in-law retorted. That's right. If you had done things right, this wouldn't have happened. It's all your fault. So living together is natural, right? Huh? What kind of logic is that? Living together is impossible. Shut up. Our home was rented, and we've already terminated the lease. There's nowhere else to go, they insisted. That's right, we have nowhere else to go other than here. Despite moving in without permission, my in-laws had a lot to say. Even David began to insult me, egged on by his parents. Hey, Alyssa, I married you. You should be happy to be married to someone as excellent as me, shouldn't you? Forget about that. Can't you start looking for a job soon? It's hard on the household finances now that we're living together. What did you say? You're cheeky for a wife. Supporting your husband is a wife's duty, and supporting your husband's family is also a wife's duty, right? I was getting sick of David, who spouted nonsense as if it made sense. Moreover, neither he nor my in-laws helped with the household chores at all. I had a job too, so I couldn't make elaborate meals, and the cleaning inevitably got neglected. No matter what they said, I maintained a cool attitude. It's hard on the household finances. If they're not happy with it, they, who caused the situation, 
should do it, I told them. I kept this attitude for several days until one day, David finally vented his frustration. Hey, what's with your attitude? You're lacking respect for me and my parents. Enough already. I work every day and do all the housework on top of that. You don't help at all, but you complain a lot. What's with that tone of voice? You don't seem to understand your place, do you? With that, David shoved divorce papers in my face. He had even kindly signed them. What is this? Can't you see? It's a divorce paper. Even a high school graduate can understand that, that right? Are you serious? Of course. If you have complaints about me and my parents, then we're getting a divorce. Staring at the divorce papers, David spoke with a triumphant look. Let me tell you, even if you throw it away, it's useless. I have more prepared, understand. If you don't want to be divorced, listen to what I say, you stupid high school graduate wife. In that moment, my rage burst forth. I couldn't stand to be with these people anymore. Since he went to the trouble of preparing it, I'd put it to good use. Clutching the divorce papers, I began to plot my revenge. First, I recorded the numerous insults from David and my in-laws on a voice recorder. When my belongings were deliberately broken, I made sure to document that as evidence. By this time, David had started working odd jobs, but none of them lasted even a week. It was as if he had given up on our family. One day, as soon as David came home, he said, Oh man, I quit this job too because it was too boring. Huh? Again? You have no right to complain to me. Right? Dad? Mom? My in-laws just nodded with smiles. This was a usual occurrence, but on this day, my father-in-law delivered the final blow. Speaking of which, I've quit too. David's father announced. What? Father-in-law, what are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. I've quit my job. I'm planning to live off you, Alyssa. Wait, what? You see, my son is too brilliant and prideful to work under those who only graduated middle or high school. We're counting on you, Alyssa, a high school graduate, to work hard. Yeah, let's count on our lowly educated Alyssa to work hard, right, dear? My mother-in-law added. What were they even saying? They intended to live off not their son, but their daughter-in-law. I couldn't stand it any longer. With my father-in-law and husband's simultaneous resignation, I decided there was no point in spending any more time with this family. I finally put all my plans into action. The first thing I did was sign a contract for a new apartment. It wasn't for all of us to move in, of course. It was a new place for me alone. However, I needed time to move without my husband and in-laws noticing. So I gifted them a five-day trip to give me time to pack. Upon receiving the trip ticket, my mother-in-law was thrilled. A trip? Oh, Alyssa, you do have a knack for these things every once in a while. I owe a lot to you all. Are you sure, Alyssa? You can come with us if you like, my mother-in-law offered. No, I have work. Please enjoy yourselves without any interruptions. Really? Well then, we'll take you up on your offer and have a blast. When the three left for the trip in high spirits, I carry out my planned move. During this time, I shipped my husband and in-law's belongings to a weekly apartment I had booked and canceled the lease on our current apartment. Of course, I bore all these expenses. It was a painful outlay, but I decided to consider it a necessary expense for my revenge. A few days later, my husband, who had just returned from the trip, called me. Hey, what the hell is going on? I can't unlock the door. With a smirk at the sound of my husband's frantic voice, I calmly responded. I suppose I've already canceled that apartment. What? Canceled? What are you talking about? Explain properly. For now, I've stored all our belongings in a weekly apartment nearby. Feel free to do as you wish from there. What? What does that mean? You're always doing as you please. If you get too cocky, you'll pay for it later. 
Are you threatening me? Should I call the police? Damn it. My husband cursed. How dare you, my foolish wife? I dropped a bombshell. Oh, I'm not your wife anymore. What? Such a selfish act. You think it's acceptable. Taking a deep breath, I spat out, sorry, but I don't need your permission. You've made fun of me for being a high school graduate long enough, and now you've quit your jobs to become dependent. I'm done with you. Enjoy your family life without me. Hey, you must be kidding. I didn't really mean to divorce. Why should I listen to you at this point? We're strangers now. I don't care what happens to you at all. Please wait. You've enjoyed looking down on people, haven't you? I can easily imagine your struggles, and it makes me laugh. Go as low as you can with your family, you trash. I said and promptly hung up the phone. After that, David kept badgering me with phone calls, but I ignored them all. Later, David and my in-laws caused a ruckus at the entrance of the apartment building, dramatically damaging part of the mailbox, which ended up becoming a police matter. Apparently, they were taken away as is. Ultimately, they were asked to pay for the damages to the mailbox, adding to their debts. Truly, they are a hopeless family. The lease for the weekly apartment where I had set their things was about to expire. Since they did not know my new address, they couldn't rely on me. I couldn't help but wonder how David, who quit his job at the same time as his father and his stay-at-home mother were going to survive from here on out. To make matters worse, my in-laws had even canceled the lease of their rented family home. I could almost see them sinking into a bottomless swamp. I couldn't help but admire my well-executed plan. I don't know how they're going to survive from here on out, and frankly, I don't care. But it's clear their future isn't bright. They brought this upon themselves. On the other hand, I am living carefree in my new home alone. Being able to spend my time leisurely without anyone bothering me is the ultimate bliss. For the time being, I don't think I'll be living with anyone else. From now on, I plan to thoroughly enjoy my time free of any worry.